Hey guys, this is Agriopi. It's been a long time since I did a build video in general. Uh, in fact, it wasn't since October of 2018 that I did a last build video, which means that stuff is pretty much outdated on that old one. In this build video, I'm going to talk a couple builds. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth, just kind of give you an overview of what I like to run when I'm out roaming. Now, a lot of times, a lot of people have all these builds for all these different game modes. I specifically only play World v. World, and in World v. World, I only roam. So, there's a lot of builds that you'll find for PvP that are going to be different than mine. A lot of builds that are going to be different if you play Zerging in World v. World. So, I just wanted to clarify that I only am a roamer. And I only roam in solo to like four, sometimes five man groups. Okay, let's get right into it. The first build up is going to be the normal build that I run when I'm roaming. Uh, this kind of covers all of the ground for soloing, uh, small group play, and I actually really prefer to run it over pretty much all the other builds now. The armor for this build is really simple, it's just Berserker gear. Um, if you have Ascended gear, you're going to want to get Mighty Infusions. That's the World v. World Power Infusions. As you can see, I use Rune of Durability. That gives you good defenses for when you are fighting outnumbered. Any account in the game shouldn't have any trouble getting a hold of Berserker gear. Now, getting a hold of the Durability runes is going to be a little more tricky if you don't have a Heart of Thorns because you can't get them. But I have some options for you. If you want to go a little more offensive, but still have a little bit of the defense, you can go Scrapper Runes. And if you want to be defensive like Durability Runes are, I recommend Earth Runes. Now, if you're a newer player or you want to run a little tankier than Full Berserk, because admittedly I play Glassy and I, that's what I like to do, um, you can do instead of Berserker gear for your armor, Marauder gear. And that comes through Heart of Thorns, so if you don't have access to that, then you're kind of out of luck on Marauder. Now, if you can't do Marauder, you might try some Berserker gear mixed with like Cavalier, Valkyrie, or uh, even Soldier's gear which is power, toughness, vitality. Um, but that's kind of something that you're going to have to figure out on your own, like which pieces, how much toughness, how much survivability do you want to take, and basically give up damage to do that. Next section is really quick. It's trinkets, which is your back piece, your earrings, your neck, and your rings. No big surprise here, Saul Berserker with Mighty Infusions from Warby World, which are power ones. Next on the docket are weapons. I use, generally speaking, Great Sword and Axe Shield. Um, a lot of people ask all of the time, actually, um, why Axe over Dagger or Sword? And honestly, it's a preference. Um, I prefer to have my Axe Throws and uh, Cyclone Axe after I land certain things. Others prefer to leap with Sword when you have Mage Vein attached to you and um, others prefer the leaps of dagger. Like I said, it's a preference. All three weapons are very good for Spellbreaker. However, I'm not talking about Spellbreaker in general, I'm talking about my build. And first thing up is actually going to be the Greatsword. As you can see, it's also Berserker. It's a recurring trend here. But on my Greatsword, I use Superior Sigil of Energy and Sigil of Hydromancy, along with Power Infusions. My weapon swap is Axe and Shield. My Axe, I use Sigil of Absorption, which is really nice for when you're full countering or shield bashing or bulls charge, you know. It has a lot of use and it gets a lot of use on Spellbreaker. For Shield, I use Cleansing Sigil. Just adds more clearing of Condies constantly. It's really nice. I don't recommend playing the game and will be rolled, especially outnumbered fightings without it. All right, let's go ahead and get right into traits, starting up with the defense line. Defense line is going to be pretty standard. As you can see, I run Shieldmaster, Defy Plane, and Last Stand. And really, I only run the defense line for outnumbered fighting in World v. World. A lot of people like to run the strength line instead of the defense line, and that is totally okay. 
really when you elect to run the strength line you give up your defenses for outnumbered fighting so if you do mostly duels and the like you're going to like the strength line spellbreaker a lot better than the defense line spellbreaker of course if you also have a support player with you all of the time in world, world you're really going to like the strength line spellbreaker as well um i never have a support player or rarely 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 do so i have to take that into account when i play so if you play in small groups and the like, maybe even consider the Strength Line Spellbreaker over the Defense Line Spellbreaker. But, that said, for outnumber fighting in World of World, Defense Line is almost a must-have. Next trait line up is your Discipline Line. And as you can see, I run Warrior Sprint, Brawler's Recovery, and Burst Mastery here. Honestly, there's not a whole lot to say about the Discipline line. You kind of are locked into taking it a lot of the times as Warrior because of the Fast Hands trait, which means you can weapon swap every 5 seconds until that becomes baseline. I don't know that I would play Warrior without the Discipline line. I mean, other people have tried and, you know, maybe have some degree of success, but not me, man. I am all for Fast Hands. Alright, last but not least is the Spellbreaker trait line. And as you can see, I run Guard Counter, Slow Counter, and Mage Bane Tether, generally speaking. Guard Counter and Slow Counter are pretty straightforward. Uh, guard Counter with the extra protection is really super good. Um, slow Counter is kind of up in the air. It's, it's not bad. There's nothing wrong with slowing people. Um, a lot of times people play with like rotations and throwing a slow in there will really really mess up with their rotations the number one thing that i change on the build is actually just one trait and that generally depends on how much condition damage that people are using that i see out in roaming um the vast majority of the time mage main tether is okay to run but sometimes everybody and the dog is running a condition build like mesmers thieves whatever and when that happens, I swap immediately to Revenge Counter. It doesn't seem like two seconds of resistance off of the Revenge Counter is a big deal, but trust me, it makes a big deal in a fight. 100%. I'm getting close to the end of this build, and I'm just going to go over the skills now pretty quickly. I don't really change them very often, sometimes, but not often. Starting off, you have Healing Signet as the hill. Then I take Bull's Charge, Berserker Stance, Balance Stance, and Rampage. Now if I'm going to swap off to a different skill, it's going to be Bull's Charge that I swap out of. And that's just because, you know, Bull's Charge is a great skill. I'm a big fan, but it's of the three there, it's kind of like the one that's a preference use, you know? Some people would actually swap off of Berserker Stance. Um, I like it for offensive and defensive, so it's kind of hard for me to swap off of it. All right, we made it all the way through the skills, through the traits, and now let's talk about the last thing on the build, and that's going to be nourishments. I'm going to have a couple options here for the actual food. I'm going to give you the expensive version, the kind of budget version, and then the basement budget version. To start, you see I have the holographic super cakes, which are pretty expensive because they only come from the super adventure box, which they put up once a year. It's pretty freaking good for warrior. As you can see, you get health every second, and then Endurance Regen, which is your dodges. Your budget food is going to be a bowl of Orion Truffle and Meat Stew, and it's pretty much the same as the Super Cakes as you see, except you have slightly higher Endurance Regen and get one mite on dodge. Okay, Super Budget Food basically is for people who don't have any gold. Um, that's the vast majority of the world because we don't get any rewards, but... Whatever, I'm not going to go into that. Anyway, as you can see, it's um, slightly worse than the Orion Truffle and Meat Stew, but you only have to pay five badges of honor for it, so there is that if you don't have any gold at all. You just have to pick up that one gold permanent portable provisioner from one of the outfitters in Ruby World once you've unlocked it. Last but not least is the utility food. You can see it's the Superior Sharpening Stones. They're super cheap, but if you also can't even afford those. I believe there is also a uh, lesser version in the permanent portable provisioner as well for pretty much the exact same thing. Um, that's it.
so on to our second build. The second build is my, uh, I don't know how to say, try hard build. Um, this is usually when we are way outnumbered, two or three to one, which means we're like running three to five people and we're fighting 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 of a pug group or a guild group. I'll swap to this. Um, it's really good for when everybody and their dog stacks firebrands and scrappers and the like for supports. Now, to start, I do want to say that there's not a whole lot different between my try hard build and my standard roaming build. There's some differences, which I'll go over here, but by and large, they're very, very similar. And to be honest with you, that's actually kind of intentional. Uh, it works out for people that might be interested in trying the build or trying all my builds because you don't have to have too much different gear. Getting into the build, we're going to start with armor. As you can see here, the armor I use is Marauder Gear, Durability Runes, and Mighty World Be World Infusion. Trinkets are exactly the same as my standard roaming build, which I just keep it as Berserker Trinkets. Now, if you want a little more survivability, you can also use Marauder Trinkets, and you're just going to lose a little bit more power. It's not a big deal. Weapons are very similar to my standard Roman build, again. Um, the only change really is I swapped out Axe for Dagger. I'm going to give a little overview of each weapon though, just for continuity sake. But if you're interested in my overview of the weapons that people use on Spellbreaker, I recommend swapping back to the standard build right at the weapons section because that's where I talk about it. Okay, Great Sword is Marauder with Energy Sigil and Hydromancy, and you can see Power Infusions yet again. In fact, the whole build is just Power Infusions, so let's just get that out of the way. For Shield, you'll see that again I have Marauder, and on it I have Cleansing Sigil. That'll do it for weapons, so let's go ahead and move right into the trait lines. So, similar to earlier in this build, almost exactly the same as my standard roaming build. The only thing that really changes here is the Spellbreaker line, but I'll still hit those two other trait lines just to cover it all for you. Like before, I went into more detail on the standard build, so if you want a little more detail on the trait lines, just skip back to there and have a listen. Defense line is great for outnumbered fights, so I just take top, 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 because it is just the best for uh, outnumbered fighting. Discipline middle, bottom, bottom is pretty standard for any warrior build a lot of the times, and this is no different. Alright, so the real change of the build is this trait line right here. Uh, as you can see, I run guard counter, but then I run loss aversion and enchantment collapse. Guard counter is pretty simple. Protection after you full counter is super good because protection itself is super good. I'm taking loss aversion here because I'm already specced to rip boons in this build and you might as well get some benefit from it since it's going to do damage and give you adrenaline every time you do. And now the big boy trait which is enchantment collapse and that just means that anytime that you remove a boon from someone everybody around them also is going to lose a boon and what that goes into loss aversion so the more boons you're removing the more damage you're doing and the more adrenaline you're getting it's just a compounding thing and it's pretty great for outnumbered fights try harding that sort of thing all right let's keep it moving right on to skills uh, as you can see i have healing signet then i use break enchantments instead of bulls charge berserker stance Balance Stance, and then finally, War Banner. Break Enchantments is pretty clear as to why I use it. Just rip spoons, which then ties into the trait lines that we just talked about. And in this case, Break Enchantments is much better than Bull's Charge, which it replaces on my bar, because Bull's Charge is just a single target knockdown. Um, it's not AoE, and you're already fighting outnumbered. That's what this build is for. So going for something that ties into the build is much better. There's an alternative for Berserker Stance, which is completely viable, and that is to use Shake It Off, which you, removes a shit ton of Condies from anywhere near you, and also as a stun break with two charges. In World World, though, you need to know that it has a very long cooldown, so you want to use the appropriately. War Banner here instead of Rampage, 
because Rampage uh, doesn't scale well in the bigger fights. A lot of people have stability or Aegis all of the time. So you're trying to be more defensive with your elites. Of course, I mean, honestly, you could use it offensively to get a stomp when you have no other recourse, nobody can get in there for the cleave, but uh, most of the time you're kind of trying to save it for maybe like your necro in your party or healer if you have one that if it dies, the whole fight is over, you know? So that's why I have War Banner there. Nourishments are exactly the same as my standard build, so I'm just going to put them up on the screen here. I'm not going to put the options that I put on the standard build. If you are interested in finding out more information, just skip back to the standard build for like the budgets and the super budget versions. Not much else to say on the foods. Uh, they're right up on the screen and that's it for the build. Here is a quick overview just so you can glance at everything all at once. All right, now we're going to do the third build, which is a core build, which means base warrior, uh, free to play, anything you know that's in the game can play it. It could also be a budget build if you uh, want to look at it that way. It's really close to the standard spellbreaker build that I run, so there's not a whole lot of changes if you've already got the gear for that. Um, it basically just runs the strength line instead of spellbreaker line um, for those of you that are watching the video that kind of know builds of the game but um, for the rest of you who might be new or just looking for different builds or information uh, I'm gonna go through each step just like I have the other two builds ahead of this one armor for me is Zerker as pretty much always um, mighty infusion power uh, and then rune of strength which I choose mostly because this build uses a trait called Midas makes right and it synergizes really well. Uh, there are, are some options you can use. Easily you could slot in, uh, instead of strength runes, if you have access to durability runes for more defense. Uh, you could also kind of even go more offensive uh, to some degree, and that is infiltration runes. Now, infiltration runes, people see that, you know, you get bigger when you stealth and they're like, what? But no, 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 the, uh, the other thing is pretty good too. <laughs> I know you're going to be super shocked by this next part, the trinkets, and uh, guess what? They're still Berserker. Not really any reason to change them. Best slot. Weapons are pretty standard here. I run Greatsword Axe Schilt. Um, there's not a whole lot different than your standard roaming build. Uh, only one thing that I can think of, and that's going to be on your um, axe. Greatsword is Berserker. Energy Sigil. Hydromancy Sigil, Power Infusions. As you can see on Axe, I'm running Berserker, Power Infusion. Um, and I've chosen Sigil of Battle because of the same reason that I said earlier, and that is I'm running Might Makes Right on this build, which you'll see in a second, and it synergizes really well with Strength Runes and the Might Makes Right. Last but not least is Shield, which is Berserker as well, Power Infusion, and uh, the Cleansing Sigil. On to trait lines. Now, as with other builds that you've already seen, I am running um, defense line and discipline line. I'll uh, put both of those up here for a few seconds. If you want more details, I recommend you skipping back in this video to the standard Spellbreaker Roamer. And um, that'll, I go into a little bit more detail on each one. That way um, you can skip around in this video and you don't really miss anything out. Okay, so that leads into Strength Line. I haven't really touched on it in this video other than kind of referencing it earlier, so I'm going to put a little more time into it here. Uh, as you can see, I'm running Peak Performance, Forceful Greatsword, and Might Makes Right on this. I do have an alternative, I'll go over that in a second. But um, Peak Performance is super good. Um, it procs off of your Bull Charge and your Rampage, and basically it just gives you extra damage. Uh, lowers the recharge a little bit. Um, your Forceful Greatsword is going to give you uh, Might and uh, some other, other other benefits. And lastly, your Might Makes Right, which means every time that you give yourself Might, you're getting 
healed and um, some endurance. As I said, there's an option that I sometimes use and it's called Berserker's Power, like Grandmaster. Basically, it just does more damage, a lot more damage. So um, you can give up Might Makes Right for Berserker Power if that's what you kind of want to do with your build, but I would recommend Might Makes Right like for general roaming. Otherwise, just go balls out, Berserker Power. For skills, I'm running the same exact thing that I ran on my standard Spellbreaker build, and that's Healing Signet, Bull's Charge, Zerker Stance, Balance Stance, and Rampage. There's no reason to really change here. You're getting kind of the best of all both worlds, but you know, you can do some alternatives if you uh, want to mess around in Worldly World. It's kind of a, a good build to do that on. Nourishments are the same as the other builds. No change here, so I'm just going to put them up on the screen just for posterity. If you're looking for more details, make sure that you skip back to the standard roaming build that I started off the video with, and that'll give you an option for budget food and um, super budget food. The last two builds on this video are um, going to be pretty short because they're for fun builds. Um, call them YOLO sometimes. Bas <laughs> Basically, you're just going to kill people. You're going to just slaughter them, but um, if a strong breeze heads in your direction, you're probably going to die unless you can get the hell out. But they are fun, and they are really fun to see big freaking numbers on too. So without further ado, here they are. Uh, the first build up is a core build, so if you have no expansions, you, you can have no problem running it. So to start off, it is Greatsword Axe Warhorn, and uh, the vast majority of your build's damage is going to come from Arcing Slices, uh, Whirls, that's Greatsword Whirls, and uh, Eviscerates from Axes. So uh, basically, you're going to want to try and get your Warhorn charge. It's the uh, number four on Warhorn. And in those uh, eight seconds, you're gonna wanna try and land one of your burst skills. So Eviscerate or uh, Slice. And um, yeah, that, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah, once you land those things, I mean, like all stars align, you get your um, peak performance buff. You've got uh, the charge going. And then you land a, a, a eviscerate. It's pretty, pretty LOL. You're gonna get some, some interesting whispers. <laughs> well, we're on the last build of the video, and it's the last yellow build. It is a rifle berserker build, so it's your, uh, it's your old pew 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 gun flame. You knew it was gonna come. So it's uh, very similar to the last build that was here. Um, there is a change with the trait lines. Uh, instead of tactics, I'm running arms. And instead of strength, I'm running berserker. The skills are, you know, pretty obvious for wh what you're intending to do, which is basically get into berserker mode and gun flame. Um, I'm running Sword and Warhorn on the swap. Sword, mostly just to get the hell out. Uh, Warhorn, if you can do a swap, get the charge, which is your number four on Warhorn, and then, you know, get a gun flame off, it's a uh, pretty, pretty gnarly damage. But uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily bank on that every fight. But, you know, occasionally it can definitely happen in the course of a fight, so if you can get away with it, go for it, because that's a lot more damage. All right, well, that's the end of the builds. And honestly, I hope that they helped. Uh, I know that the last two were pretty fun builds, but the ones before that, I I, I hope that I was more in depth, but not too in depth, you know? I didn't want to overwhelm maybe new players with uh, information and instead just give them like the basics of the build and what makes them strong um, and how to maybe utilize that in Worldly World. 
I put in more effort into this video than I originally intended to. I just intended to give like some overviews of each build, kind of um, very straightforward and maybe not spend more than one or two minutes on each. But um, the more I got into it, the more I realized that helping out new players, I kind of don't mind it. So I uh, hope that it really did help you. And if not, or if you have some other questions, just let me know in comments and um, I'll try and answer as best I can. And yes, girls do like to play Warriors too. It is true.